<laughs> hey friends, welcome to Thursday. It's my birthday. Yay! It's your birthday, so I know you want to die. Birthday, sick, girl, you know. I'm 29. I know nobody believes it. I look like I'm 14, but who cares? Everybody, I care. It hurts me a lot. <laughs> well, that's my face so young. Anyways, you know what else is young? You, lovely person. I hope you check out our website, UFD Deals, to save money on tech products around the internet, especially with some of the stuff we're gonna be talking about today. Price increases are coming. So yeah, you might wanna check out UFD Deals to save money on tech products. We put the best deals on the website. You click on the links, we make cash. It's a win, 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 win. So do it, UFD.tech, link in the video description. Now I'm gonna ump the ante and up the energy. Now let's go ahead and talk about NVIDIA Super, my friends, because we have tons of details coming out. Supposedly, for some reason, NVIDIA is gonna be announcing them tomorrow. Yes, June 21st is going to be the announcement date of NVIDIA Super. That's at least according to several different sources around the internet. Also tomorrow, we're gonna be doing our charity live stream for my son's genetic condition, so you guys can tune into that over on the main UFD Tech channel. However, we got some interesting stuff coming down the pipeline with Super. It has been about 10 straight months since NVIDIA has made a GPU announcement, so it's not like it's coming in all of that soon, and it's not likely that they're gonna go on sale tomorrow. They're just going to be announced, and sales are expected to start maybe sometime in late July. However, they're gonna be replacing all of the current RTX lineup, not the GTX lineup, because obviously we just got the 1650, 1660, 1660 Ti, but the 2080, the 2070, and the 2060 are all going to be increased into their super fashion. And in fact, they're gonna look to be pretty good. So supposedly the RTX 20 Super is gonna be an RTX 2080 Ti core with just some un like lockdown feature sets and not as much CUDA cores as the 2080 Ti. It's also gonna happen for the 2070 it's actually gonna be more like a 2080, and then the 2060 is gonna be bumped up to be more like a 2070, and then again, with faster GDDR6 memory. So there's improvements coming across the board, and supposedly there might be an RTX 2080 Ti Super, but that won't be coming until later, later on down the line. So this is actually gonna be more like a typical NVIDIA launch, where they only launch the 80 and 70 and 60 series, and then the TI comes later, like they did with the 10 series and the 7 series and the 9 series, I forgot about that one. So it's a little typical, but then they're also calling it super. They're not actually, like, I don't, I don't know what NVIDIA is doing anymore. Anyways, one of the big announcements or rumors that has come out rather is that the fact that we now have pricing for these. This is an exclusive leak from WCCF Tech where they're showing that for some of the cards, there's actually gonna be no price increase whatsoever. So the 2080 Super is gonna sell for $800, which in case you're not familiar, the 2080 on NVIDIA's website already sells for $800. The 2070 Super is gonna sell for $600, which is how much the 2070 costs right now on NVIDIA's website. But the 2060 is going to see a price increase going from $350 to $430 for the Super version. But it's gonna be more like a 2070 than a 2060. I actually am least thrilled with that, but it also is gonna be competing against the recently announced RX 5700 XT, which is supposed to come in roughly around that price point. So Nvidia releasing something that's gonna be a little faster at the same price as what Nvidia or AMD has on their lineup. So Nvidia Super seems to be a response to AMD to keep them at bay, as well as to give people new cards. I guess the RTX 2080 Super is not gonna put it as the top card on the market that's still going to belong to the 2080 Ti, but it's going to narrow that gap. And especially since they're not technically increasing the prices on the RTX Super lineup, it's not that bad of a setup. So we'll have to see how that goes. We're supposed to get the announcement tomorrow. We will see if that happens, and then they're supposed to go on sale in July, but they're trying to get the jump on AMD's mind share for when Navi launches on July 7th. But with more NVIDIA news, let's talk about ray tracing because it was announced, this was announced like a week ago, but I'm finally getting to talk about it in hot news, and that's Doom Eternal is actually going to support ray tracing. 
And on top of that, we have some more details coming out about Cyberpunk 2077's ray tracing because it was confirmed at E3. Cyberpunk is going to have ray tracing. They showed off some pictures, but it wasn't exactly known. Are you doing full like global illumination? Is it in the reflections? Is it in the shadows? How are you doing it? And it appears at least from CD Projekt Red, they primarily talked about reflections but they didn't really specify what it's gonna have. But then PC Games and also said that it's gonna have ray traced ambient occlusion and diffused illumination. But there's not a whole lot, but it's just a little bit of like what, how they're gonna ray trace uh, Cyberpunk. It's not gonna be a fully ray trace game. It's just gonna have bits and bobs and little elements here and there to make it a little bit nicer to look at. But then on top of that, Nvidia dropped actually what would be a bombshell for anybody who actually cares, maybe not for, you know, consumer computer users like you or I, but they're bringing CUDA support to ARM, which is actually pretty incredible. They're going to be working to make it so that CUDA is supported on supercomputers that are powered by ARM, which is kind of incredible. So they're getting their fingers into more supercomputers on in a whole bunch of different ways. It's kind of nice. And then in case you've been keeping up with the Huawei saga, that has been something. They released how much they expect to lose from this whole trade issue agreement that's going on with the US, and they say that it's probably gonna be to the tune of $30 billion. This is not necessarily $30 billion lost, but $30 billion lost in potential extra profit that they were supposed to get this year. They're only supposed to shrink by like, I think it's something like 4% behind what they were last year. So they're not shrinking that much. It's just mainly loss of growth opportunities with all of the actual growth opportunities likely going to Samsung since Apple's also caught up in the trade war. So Samsung, the Korean company is winning out of the US and China trade war agreement. Who would have thought? <laughs> and then more reports about the tariff issue that's going on. It's expected, according to the Consumer Technology Association, that the prices of US laptops and tablets should be going up about 20% in the next coming months. This is obviously due to increased tariffs on consumer technology products coming out of China and stuff that's produced there. A lot of companies have possibly been able to shift production to Taiwan, but not every company could do that. So the ones that are stuck behind are gonna have to raise their prices in order to offset the cost of the tariffs, and that's gonna raise laptop prices by quite a bit. But then let's talk about something else that's kind of stupid, which is the Destiny 2 stuff going on with Google Stadia. So one of the big announcements that came concurrently with the Google Stadia announcement was that Destiny 2 was getting full cross-save support so that you can import any character that you've played on any other platform and bring it to any other platform. However, that doesn't mean that if you're on Google Stadia that you get to play with other Destiny 2 people because apparently only Stadia owners can play with other Stadia owners when it comes to Destiny 2. Reese is freaking out behind the camera. It's really disappointing to him. Yes, it's gonna be a walled garden where Destiny 2 Stadia owners are not gonna be able to play with other console brethren and it's gonna be kinda lame. But the good news is Google announced that you can change your Google Stadia gamer tag at any point. There's no uh, limit on that. There's no cost associated with it. Just go ahead and change your name. You don't want to be Sniper Wolf 69420375, do you? No, so just change it to Sniper Dog. You're welcome. That was terrible. And then there's some new reports on the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 865 coming out and including the fact that it's gonna be supporting LPDDR5 RAM for the phones that I'm dropping my kazoo as well as on-chip 5G support. So the next Snapdragon is supposed to introduce a few new pieces of technology that are pretty good. And then let's finish hot news with a little uh, kind of strange report, which is that Twitch is actually suing users who were streaming things that they shouldn't have been streaming on the website. So they've opened up lawsuits against people who were streaming porn and people who were stream live streaming the uh, New Zealand Christchurch shooting. So uh, I actually have not heard of another platform bringing a lawsuit to its users for violating the law as well as its terms of service, but Twitch seems to be taking this very seriously. Whether or not that's a good thing is dependent on what perspective you view it from. Obviously, there's the perspective that they're actually trying to crack down really heavily on content that they don't want on their platform, such as porn, such as uh, you know violence and all of that kind of stuff. But it could also be viewed as an overstep where if you do something that Twitch doesn't like,
like, even if it is not necessarily illegal, they could take lawsuit action against you. And that might not be something that people would want to participate in with them as a platform. So it's kind of which side of the fence you're looking on. So I'm curious to hear, how do you view Twitch suing users who were not using the service for what they want it used for? Let me know down in the comments. Anyways, that's the end of hot news. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to love yourselves, I think. That'd be good, I suppose. Don't forget to check out UFD deals to save money on tech-related products around the internet, ufd.tech. Link is for that's in the video description. By the time we release our hot news tomorrow, we will have been streaming our charity stream for several hours. So come on over to the UFD Tech channel and participate in our 24-hour charity stream, which is to help uh, raise money for research on the Syngap condition, which is a very rare genetic disorder that my son happens to have. Only 300 people in the world have been diagnosed thus far. My son is the first one in South Africa. And in fact, he has uh, a very unique genetic mutation. So nobody in the world has his condition in the way that he does. So just show up, help support. We're gonna be raising money for medical research, not necessarily for us as a family. We wanna support everybody else who has to suffer from this condition as well. So. Show up there, hit the like button. Love you too, subscribe, I'm Brett. Bye.